So, <laughs> there was a meeting of faculty of a famous seminary in its earliest days, and they were short $10,000 to take care of all of their bills and pay their employees and all that kind of stuff. By the way, this is Jerry Rothhauser with Spiritual Rants, and you can check out my blog, which is a commentary on the one-year Bible at spiritualrants.com. This is our podcast. So the faculty got together and prayed, and one of the most famous teachers at that time, Harry Ironside, not to be confused with Raymond Burr, was praying that God would, would take care of that need. He said, Lord, you own the cattle on a thousand hills. Please sell some of those cattle to help us meet this need. Not long after that, guess what? They got a check for $10,000 for the school by a friend of the school's who had no idea that Ironside had prayed that prayer, but he sold some of his cattle and sent $10,000 to the school. Now, you probably heard many, many stories similar to that one of how God provided, right? There's another one. George Mueller, you ever heard of him? The 1800s? He trusted God for everything. And he took care of a lot of orphans in England back in that day. And he just existed by faith. One day, he needed dinner for all of the orphans, and he had no food. He had them sit down at the table for dinner, <laughs> and there was a knock at the door, and someone had brought dinner, unbeknownst of the need, just brought in dinner for all the orphans. Have you ever had a story like that? If you have, then you should remember that when you have a need. But nevertheless, one of our lucky 13 scriptures this week is Philippians chapter 4, verse 19. And my God will supply every need of yours according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Philippians 4.19. Good to memorize all of these. We've already covered Isaiah 41.10, that God will always be with you and strengthen you. James 1.5, God provides wisdom. 1 Peter 5.7, that he will take on all of our cares himself for us. Philippians 4.13, that he will strengthen us in Christ. Now this one, provision. One of my favorite names for God is, well, I would say Yahweh, but it ruins the alliteration. So we'll use Jehovah Jireh. Jehovah, you know, means Lord, God in the Old Testament. And Jireh, means provides, the Lord who provides, Jehovah Jireh. One of my favorite verses of all time, and my life verse when I was first saved, Matthew 6.33, after a passage where Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount told everyone how God would take care of them, the same as he takes care of 
flowers and birds. Have you ever thought about that when you're outside? You ever go outside? <laughs> ever see like a tree or bird? Lots of birds, especially last spring, of course, grabbing worms. They don't worry about where their food's coming from. God provides it for them. And it, by the same token, he provides for all of those who are trusting him. One, one thing I found, and my son tells me I'm not poor, but sometimes I feel like I am poor, and he says you're not, but one advantage of not being one of the richer people in the country is it's easier to find out what God's will is. If I can't afford it, it's not his will. Sometimes, if I can afford it, it may not be his will, but it may be. But it helps me to decide what God wants me to do, or sometimes what he doesn't. And we've had occasions where God has provided, and it's just like coming out, come out of thin air. We had a kickback on our mortgage escrow fund one year, and it was like, where'd that come from? Well, we needed that. <laughs> we didn't even know it was coming. And as you know, there's a song that says, some of the best things in life are what? Free. So don't envy those rappers and non-entity celebrities who are filthy rich. You know, whatever God has given us, that's what we should be thankful for. And if you think you need more, you know what you can do is give. Luke 6.38. But that's not just money. If you need friends, be a friend to someone. And guess what? You'll have more friends. So think about that. This, this week, and look up what I call the idiot rule. I was watching a, a Christian movie with a pastor, Corbin Burnson. He's not a Christian pastor, but he was playing one in a movie, and he was all twisted in a pretzel, and, oh, God, why did this happen, and blah, blah, blah. He didn't understand the idiot rule. So you can look that up on my blog. Just type in idiot rule, it should come up. That's our verse for this week, one of the lucky 13, Philippians 4.19. So think about that, and Jehovah Jireh. And I hope next week you'll be downloading.